I think the best way that I would describe my state of being at that time was I felt like a scribble. You know when you, you like have a pen and you just scribble on a piece of paper? That's basically what I felt when I was told that I had this at age 18. Not many people know this about me, but I used to suffer from something called PCOS. PCOS stands for Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome and that's just a big fancy word for um, basically I had cysts in my ovaries which are kind of like these water pockets um, not really like a tumor but kind of like a tumor where there's pockets of water on your cysts and basically because of that I couldn't have my period for like six months at a time and because I wasn't getting my period, my hormones were all messed up, I was gaining weight, I had acne all over my face, and the kind of acne that I had was like, you know those, um, the cystic acne that's like deep under the skin that you can't even pinch out? I had deep cystic acne that was painful uh, all over, and I suffered from polycystic ovarian syndrome and I was diagnosed with it when I was 18. So I would say that I got diagnosed with it at a time in my life when I was very stressed out. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't like where I was at and I had just a lot of emotions pent up inside of me that I didn't express for like 18 years of my life. And um, I first noticed it when I had such bad acne like all over my face and, um, the, and I went to the dermatologist. And the dermatologist gave me all these antibiotics and creams and all these things, but nothing was working. And I was so devastated because, you know, when you're 18, you want to look pretty. You want to look... I thought that was going to be like my prime peak of my youth. And here I am with all these pimples all over my face. So I went to the dermatologist, spent lots of money at the dermatologist, and that didn't really help. So next I went to a, um, an OBGYN because I wasn't getting my period for six months and I was really worried uh, what was wrong with me inside. So I went to the OBGYN and they did an ultrasound on my ovaries and my like lower abdomen area. And that's when they found through the ultrasound that I had these fluid pockets, these cysts on my ovary. So when they discovered that, the doctors told me something that really traumatized me at that time. Uh, they told me basically that PCOS was incurable. They told me that I was gonna live with this for the rest of my life, which meant that I would have no periods or irregular periods my whole life, and that I would have to be put on birth control to fake induce a period with chemical hormones and. I would have to live with cystic acne for the rest of my life and they told me I was going to be infertile and because of that, because of the cysts, I was going to have like ovarian cancer when I got older. All sorts of horrible, horrible things that the doctor told me as a result of my diagnosis. So I was 18 and if a professional doctor was telling me all these things about myself, I really believed her. I really thought that everything she was saying was true because why would I not believe her? She's supposed to be the professional doctor. So when I got that diagnosis, I was so devastated and I was so mad and I was so sad. I was feeling all these mixed emotions all at the same time because basically this person told me that my womanhood is over. She told me I couldn't have kids. She told me I was gonna get cancer. She told me all these things that made me believe that, oh my God, I'm 18 and my life barely even started and it's already over. So I remember being just upset, just so angry. Why me? What did I do wrong? Before this, all throughout high school, I was an athlete. I was eating organic. I was doing all the things that was supposed to make me healthy. I was active, I was eating well, all this stuff, but I was still having these physical issues. So not only was I not getting my periods and I was breaking out, but I started to become 
allergic to different foods. I started becoming gluten intolerant. I could not eat gluten at all, or else my stomach would be very upset and I would go to the bathroom. And so I remember avoiding foods with gluten. Like I felt like I was walking on eggshells in my life because one false move would make my hormones flare up. I would break out and I would, my stomach would not be happy. So I was constantly doing this like little dance in my life, being controlled by this thing. I felt like I had lost control of my physical health, lost control of my emotional well-being, my mental well-being. And to make things worse, not only was I gluten intolerant, but over time I became allergic to dairy as well. So the list of all these things that I couldn't do, couldn't eat, couldn't you know, enjoy just grew longer and longer and longer and I felt so devastated. I really felt like my life was over before it even began. I couldn't enjoy any of my favorite foods like pizza was out the door, pasta was out the door and this was kind of at a time where uh, gluten-free options were still limited. Um, it wasn't as abundant or easily accessible at it, as it is today. Uh, back then, there were only a few things that were gluten-free, dairy-free, and the options, the few options that existed didn't taste good at all. So after she gave me that diagnosis, I was put on birth control to fake induce a period, like she said, because my body wasn't producing my period uh, normally, so I had to take hormone medicine, birth control. Hormone, hormone medicine to basically false induce a period every single month and my pimples were still there and I spent lots and lots of money on expensive creams that the dermatologist prescribed to me but basically it was just medicine on top of more medicine on top of more medicine on top of more medicine and nothing was really working if if anything the acne got worse and yeah i was getting my period but now that i was eating hormone pills i was moody i was gaining weight and i didn't like how i looked in the mirror i didn't like how i felt inside it was all a big jumbled mess within me and outside of me I think the best way that I would describe my state of being at that time was I felt like a scribble. You know when you, you like have a pen and you just scribble on a piece of paper? That's basically what I felt when I was told that I had this at age 18. So at 23, <laughs> My mom, who was in this yoga practice called Body and Brain Yoga, she came home with a very, very interesting looking thing that made me say, what the hell? My mom has finally lost it. The thing that she brought home with her was this. It's called a belly button healing wand. When I first saw this thing, and when I first heard this thing, I was like, what in the world is this? But she came home with this device and she said, here, try this. I think it's gonna help you with your cysts and I think it's gonna help you with your acne and weight gain. Can you imagine the expression I had on my face when she put this plastic yellow T-shaped tool in front of me and told me that this was the secret that was gonna make me better? I had just spent literally thousands of dollars on going to dermatologists, going to the OBGYN, getting all these creams and pills and bending over backwards and avoiding foods and all that stuff. And how could that device help me? I thought she was crazy. So when my mom brought this tool home, I just couldn't believe how this could solve my problems. But she said, hey, no offense, but you're at rock bottom anyway. So why not just try it? And okay, all right, she was right. I was seriously at rock bottom in terms of my health, in terms of my self-esteem. I didn't like myself. I didn't like who I saw in the mirror. I didn't like what I was feeling. So she was right. I really had nothing to lose at that point. So I was recommended to do belly button healing for 20 minutes every single day. And I'll link a video down below so you can see more details about belly button healing and how to do it. Basically, I did belly button healing for 20 minutes a day 
and thinking like, oh my god, my mom's crazy. I'm just gonna do this because I want her to leave me alone. I don't want her to nag at me. So I kind of did it just to like shut my mom up. To my wildest surprise, I kid you not, I was so amazed when this happened. After a week of doing 20 minutes of belly button healing every single day, my acne started to diminish. I looked at myself in the mirror and I could noticeably tell that the really bright red spots all over my face were fading away. I just was so excited by this. I said, no effing way. So I did it more for 20 minutes every single day. And after two weeks, I'm not even kidding you, my acne went away completely. And at this point, I really could not believe it because I had tried so many creams, I had tried so many like uh, detox juices, I even tried putting toothpaste on my face, I tried putting baking soda on my face, all the concoctions and secret tips and tools that I searched online, I tried it all. Every single thing I've tried and nothing worked. And you're telling me that this little tool was the answer to my problems? No way. But I liked the fact that I was seeing results, so I kept doing it. And after about a month later, I ev everything just started to become normal. After about a month later, my periods came back. My periods came back. And this was like, this was like the, the mind blower. My periods came back after about a month, and then after that, I was so excited, I did it more. And then about a month and a half, I got really, really brave. And I wanted to try eating something that I could not eat before, which was gluten and dairy. And what was the best food that came to my mind that had both? I tried pizza for the first time in years. After I ate the slice of pizza, my stomach felt fine. And this was not normal at that time for me because every time I would even eat like a bite of pizza, my stomach would instantly disagree with it. But I ate the pizza, nothing happened. And that's when I just could not believe what this tool did for me. So then I started really advocating for this tool and I learned more principles and facts as to how and why belly button healing worked. And basically, in a nutshell, I'll link more information down in the description below, but in a nutshell, my gut and your gut carries a lot of emotions, a lot of toxins based on your diet, based on a sedentary lifestyle. With gravity, everything just falls down into the hips and the gut area. So now I realize, looking back, that I had accumulated all the emotions, stress, and junk food junk food and all these things that I was doing for my unhealthy lifestyle was all collected in my lower abdomen, which made that, made that part of my body toxic and caused a whole bunch of hormonal problems and all the issues that I was dealing with was stemming from that. But belly button healing through the massage, it helped me clear those toxins, it helped me clear all the bad things that were happening in there. So. Um, all the all the blood that was toxic in there all the all the lymphatic fluids that were in there everything that was just rotting inside of my gut sorry kind of gross rotting inside of my gut I was able to massage it out and circulate everything under under my um, my lower belly with the tool and that's basically what pretty much gave me my life back it really saved my life like I'm not even kidding I really credit belly button healing to giving my life back because without this tool I would still be very pimply I would still probably be on birth control uh, false inducing all of my periods I would still have all these hormonal issues I'd still have sp probably spent like hundreds of thousands of dollars by now because uh, it's been years going to different doctors who told me basically that I was gonna die of cancer. So if you're someone who is struggling with hormonal problems or digestive problems or anything that is related to the gut and abdomen, please do your research online and you will see how important the gut is to your health, not just physical health, but emotional health and mental health as well. So if you are suffering from these things, I really, really recommend this tool. I promise you it will help 
alleviate, if not get rid of, like me, all the problems that you have inside. So that's my story with PCOS. So if you're someone with PCOS, or if you know someone with PCOS, or if you just really resonated with this story, let me know in the comments below and I'll respond to them. It's been seven years since I was PCOS free, all thanks to the belly button healing tool and regular self-management that I do for my body. So I highly, highly encourage it. And if you are suffering from it, don't lose hope. I remember when I was going through it and trying to read about some information to get me through the PCOS or help me like uh, calm the symptoms of PCOS, I couldn't find anything online that was hopeful. I read a lot of people's stories about how they like, you know, some people lose their hair, some people like um, grow like facial, some women grow facial hair because the hormones are all messed up. And basically all of them said that they lost hope or the doctors told them like what the doctors told me that they're gonna live with this for the rest of their lives and their lives are basically uh, ruined because of this but what i want to say is don't lose hope there's a solution there's a tool out there and if it helped me with pcos i know that it can help other people with hormonal problems or pcos as well so if you're wondering, yes, I still do belly button healing every single day for 20 minutes. And I kind of think of it as like eating a meal. You eat a meal three times a day, every single day, right? So with that, I give myself the time to massage my organs, massage my gut so that I know everything is moving fluidly and moving smoothly so that I can take care of my health from the inside out. There's a lot of information out there that you'll find when you do some research that links the gut to the brain, which is why the gut affects your mental health so much. And by the way, if you're interested in psychology and learning more about the brain, check out this magazine, Psych2Go.